You know, medicine is so messed up right now. We're so frustrated with dealing with, oh, I don't know, malpractice and the constant challenge for tort reform and what's going on with uh, healthcare as far as healthcare reform. Everything's wrong with medicine. We don't want our kids to go into it anymore. If we can retire, we want to retire soon. So I thought, all right, how am I going to get these people motivated about this? It's just awful. And then I thought to myself, you know, it's actually not very awful at all when you start thinking about it. I'd argue that uh, we're pretty fortunate to do what we do. In fact, I'd argue that we're rock stars. We are the rock stars of healthcare. And you all, as leaders in the state, are the leaders of the rock band. We get paid pretty well for what we do, best I can tell. You know, we get to deal with people when they're at their most vulnerable and their most needy position. We get to touch people's souls when they're in a position of great vulnerability. Why are we all so down about what's going on in healthcare? We are very privileged. Well, it, it took me back to a session that I went to way back when at one of the hospitals I was at, and you guys have all been in this situation where they say, we gotta have a retreat. That's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna take a half a day, and you all are gonna go to this retreat, and we're gonna sort of work on all the things we wanna work on in healthcare and our hospital situation. And you go, okay, that's great. And the first thing you do is tell your partners, listen, you know, next Wednesday from eight to noon, I'm gonna be at a retreat. And so if you guys can just take care of the patients for me, that would be great. And their immediate response is, you know, that's great. I'm really glad you're going to retreat. I'm more than happy to see patients for you while you're gone. You know, I'm sure it's going to be really productive and you're going to bring back some great new ideas to us. So I'm already on edge when I'm going there, right, thinking, you know, this is going to be such a waste of time. i got to get it done and get out of here, get back and see patients. My partners are going to kill me. So the guy that starts presenting, he's this big, lanky, sort of goofy guy, and he starts talking about, you know, I don't understand what's wrong with you doctors. And he puts up a, a diagram like this. And he says, you're all so upset about all these different things that are happening. And I really want you to rethink about what you're doing and why you're doing it and how you ended up here. And he said, you all are focused out in that gray circle. In the gray circle is malpractice and angry patients and busy schedules and EMRs and all of that kind of stuff. You remember this, don't you? Yeah. And we said, yeah, of course we are. And he said, you know, why don't you start focusing on the green circle, the green center, which is why you decided to be a doctor. We thought, okay, most of us are going, all right, it's been about a half hour already. Cell phones, these portable cell phones had just come out, so we were all going outside to answer calls and stuff like that because we couldn't wait till the thing got over. And then they put you at the round tables, right? You can't be on a table like this where you can hide and sneak out. You're at a round table with a bunch of your colleagues. And again, really goofy guy, and he says, all right, what I want you to do is all at your tables, go around the table, and each of you say why you decided to be a physician. And we thought, are you kidding me? <laughs> Seriously? This is what I took the half day off and I'm getting grief from my partners for to do this. So we did it. And I would tell you, by about the third person telling that story, I'm choked up. I'm having trouble just sort of holding it together. The stories were unbelievable about what motivated people to be physicians. We had every example. It was a crowd from different parts of the world. One of them in the audience here today was describing going and delivering babies with his father in a community in uh, South America, in sort of an uh, indigent population. And it went one after another. And everybody had a story. And we kind of went around and did that. It didn't take all that long. And all of a sudden, with about, within seconds, we were rerouted as to why we did what we did. And then he went back and took, 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 showed us the diagram again and said, so tell me again now after doing that, 
What's so important about what's in, those, in that gray circle that you guys are all focused on? It worked. About a month or two after that, I'm at a meeting, and um, it's the SICU nurses, surgical intensive care nurses, and the recovery room nurses. And they're fighting about getting the patients transferred from the recovery room to the SICU and all the problems that they have and all the reasons they can't do it this way, they can't do it that way. And I thought, okay, I'm emboldened by this new spirit that I got from this retreat that I didn't even want to go to. And I just said, I just have one question. What do you think would be best for the patient? It was freaking magical. All the conflict went away instantly. I couldn't hardly believe it. And they said, well, obviously, if we did it this way, they'd be the best for the patient. And they kind of caught themselves. And then people fell into two categories. One that was a category that was sort of embarrassed that they hadn't really recognized that. And, you know, geez, we really ought to focus on the patient. That's what we're all about. And the other was a category that wasn't necessarily that focused on it, but they'd be damned if they're going to admit in public that they're supporting some approach that really wasn't in the patient's best interest. So I say get back to the core of why we went into medicine. Stop focusing on all of the crap. And even when we focus on the crap, remember the core that we're coming for. We're so much more influential and powerful when we come from that focus as opposed to when we come from the focus of these overburdened, overworked victims that are just trying to make it through the day. We are so fortunate. We get to touch people's souls. Not many people get to do that. And I would say we're the rock stars of healthcare, and we ought to act like the rock stars of healthcare. But, like this one, anybody know who this is? It's Jeff Beck. I saw Jeff Beck, this is from like a couple weeks ago at the uh, Michigan Theater in Ann Arbor. A couple days before the hash bash, those of you that were there at the hash bash, anybody there? Anybody at the hash bash? Oh, you probably wouldn't admit it in here. You know, never mind. <laughs> so Jeff Beck. Now here's, so Jeff Beck, again, maybe you know about him, maybe you don't. He is a rock star. He's unbelievable. He is unbelievably gifted. When you watch Jeff Beck on the stage, and my buddy that came from North Dakota to see him with me took these pictures. When you watch him on the stage, he is very humble. He sits and he's focused on the music. He focuses on the other musicians. And you can see him looking at them, getting eye contact. He's smiling all the time. And he's very shy. He'll come out and say a few things in the microphone. And then he'll go back and just sort of do his craft. But he's a rock star. Here's his, last, his latest album is called Emotion and Commotion. And here's what the producer of Emotion and Commotion said. As I finished the album, I said to Harvey that he was the only artist that I'd be happy to start making another album with immediately. For as long as I can remember, Jeff has been my guitar hero, the guitarist that neither I nor anyone else could ever compare with. It's been a major pleasure and privilege to play a small part in the career of the defining guitarist of our time, the self-deprecating, brilliant Jeff Beck. Simplicity, self-deprecating Jeff Beck. My argument to us is, and you as physician leaders, go back to the core of why I went into medicine. You all remember it. You didn't stumble your way into medicine. It was pretty intentional. Reground yourself there. In all of the work that we do, including working in the political arenas and in the legislative arenas and anywhere else we're trying to have influence, and recognize that we are extremely fortunate rock stars. Thank you.